Hello guys, kamusta kayong lahat? At kung bago lang kayo sa channel na ito, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at i-hit ang notification bell para maging updated sa susunod pa nating mga uploads. Sa video na ito ay tatalakay natin ang physical education which is for quarter 1, weeks 1 to 3 physical activity and physical fitness assessments. So for this module, matatalakay natin ang mga warming up activities at ang physical fitness components. So for this module, the learner is expected to undertake physical activity and physical fitness assessments. Determine which physical fitness component you need specific improvements on. So, proceed na tayo dito sa ating pre-activity. What I know, physical activity readiness questionnaire. Let us assess if you are ready to participate or engage in any physical activities by answering honestly the physical activity readiness questionnaire. Please accomplish the form below by putting a check mark for every question. Hey guys, nga pala, please don't forget to write your name in every module that you'll be answering. As soon as you'll be submitting your answer sheets, please don't forget to write your names. Okay, so bago tayo mag-proceed, may papanoorin lang tayong video. And here it is. Dynamic stretching is best performed prior to an exercise routine or a game or sporting event. Static stretching is best performed afterwards. Dynamic stretching has been shown to improve performance and reduce the rate of injuries in people participating in sports. It's best performed prior to a sporting activity. Static stretching is best performed after an activity. And static stretching is uh, a form of stretching in which a person maintains a position where a muscle is elongated for a prolonged period of time, usually about 30 seconds. Dynamic stretching, on the other hand, is a form of stretching in which a person goes through their full range of motion until they feel a stretch and quickly returns to a normal position. And today we're gonna to go over dynamic stretches. So these are the perfect moves to include in your warm up. They'll both open up and improve your mobility and your flexibility, but they'll also get your blood pumping. There's a lot of different research about stretching before you work out, and static stretching has been shown to sort of reduce your power. You know, it doesn't necessarily help you really get warm. It is great still to do to improve your flexibility, but if you do the dynamic stretches, you'll get warm, you'll improve your mobility, you'll get everything loose and moving. You wanna make sure that you focus on dynamic stretches that actually help with the exercises you're gonna do during your workout. So it doesn't really help if you're doing ring out the towel if you're gonna be doing a leg day. So make sure to focus on moves that will actually help you open up and warm up for your workouts.
today I wanted to share with you some great static stretches. These are great moves to improve your flexibility. They can be done after your workout as part of your cool down.
So yun kung mapapansin niyo dito sa ating module ay meron lamang kakaunting mga examples ng static stretching exercises at dynamic stretching exercises ang ibinigay. Pero actually marami naman yan. Itong nasa module natin ay examples lamang. Ngunit mas mainam pa rin na gagawa tayo ng mga stretching activities na fit doon sa physical activity na ating gagawin. So now let us proceed to our main topic which is Components of Physical Fitness. Okay, this video is going to look at the health-related components of fitness. Uh, this is the first dot point for what is the uh, for the critical question: What is the relationship between physical fitness, training, and movement efficiency? Okay, so the health-related components of fitness are essentially going to be the foundational components of fitness. These are the ones that are going to form the basis for any kind of training for any sport to get the athlete ready to go. Uh, normally focused on in the pre-season. Cardiorespiratory endurance is also known as cardiovascular endurance or as aerobic fitness. Uh, this refers to the body's ability to maintain movement for an extended period of time. Uh, it is essentially your heart, lungs, blood vessels uh, and your muscles all working together to absorb, deliver and utilise oxygen in the production of energy which enables you to move. Uh, so in other words, this is how well the cardiorespiratory system works which you learned about in the last critical question. Uh, the cardiorespiratory endurance is all about delaying fatigue. Uh, it allows uh, for a higher intensity to be maintained for longer when it comes to performance. Uh, when you try and measure cardiorespiratory uh, endurance, uh, you're going to try and use something like a beat test or you might do a VO2 max test. When we come to muscular strength, uh, muscular strength is the maximal amount of force that a muscle can produce in one contraction. Okay, so don't get it confused with muscular endurance. Muscular strength is one contraction and it's a maximal contraction. Uh, greater strength means less effort is needed in order to produce particular movements and to produce a given amount of force. Uh, so that obviously is beneficial in performance because you are perceiving uh, to be exerting yourself at a lower rate. Uh, so a rate of perceived uh, effort relates closely to fatigue and so muscular strength improves, uh, improves movement efficiency by delaying fatigue. Uh, it can also improve technique and reduce the chances of injury to the athlete. Uh, muscular strength is measured by doing a 1RM or repetition maximum, or you can use a dynamometer uh, to do some testing. Muscular endurance, on the other hand, is a muscle's or a group of muscles' ability to repeat a specific movement over and over again. Uh, muscle endurance is tested using how many times an athlete can perform a specific movement in a set time. Uh, so for example, you might do push-ups or sit-ups, how many can you do in one minute? Muscle endurance improves uh, your body's movement efficiency because it helps to delay fatigue, um, particularly the fatigue that's that burning fatigue in the anaerobic system, particularly that lactic acid buildup. Uh, so if you have good muscular endurance, that uh, lactic acid uh, buildup takes longer to happen and that allows you to maintain good posture, good technique for a longer period of time. Muscular endurance is tested using uh, a range of different tests, but essentially you're going to ask the athlete to do as many of something as they can in one minute or until they reach fatigue, uh, whether that be something like push-ups or sit-ups. Uh, and those tests are often specific to a muscle or muscle groups. When it comes to flexibility, flexibility is the range of motion or movement at your joints and refers to your body's ability to move freely. Uh, flexibility is joint and or muscle group specific. Uh, so if you're flexible at your shoulder, that doesn't mean that you're going to be flexible at your hip. Flexibility helps to prevent injuries. Uh, it is going to improve your posture. It's going to decrease back pain, maintain healthy joints uh, and improve balance during movement. This results uh, in improved movement efficiency uh, through better biomechanical movement. Uh, so in order to measure flexibility, you might use something like a sit and reach test, but as I said, each test will be specific uh, to the joint. Body composition is the different tissue types that make up a person's body and usually focuses on a person's percentage body fat that can be used to determine bone, muscle and water composition uh, percentages as well. Now body composition is sport specific as well, uh, so uh, less fat means that you have less weight to move around, uh, allowing you to move for longer periods such as a marathon or allows you to accelerate faster in things like the 100 meter sprint or in football. Uh, however, you might want a larger body mass uh, because that means you're harder to move. And so things like wrestlers, so sumo wrestlers or NFL blockers, for example, uh, they want to be quite large so that the other person is, uh, has to exert more force in order to move them. 
Um, ideal body composition is going to be specific to the sport and can improve movement efficiency as per the example just given. Okay, this video is going to look at the skill related components of fitness. This, the first one is speed. Uh, speed is the rate at which something moves measured by distance that the object travels divided by the time it took to travel and is usually measured as meters per second or in kilometers per hour depending on how fast the object is moving and how far they're moving. Speed is beneficial for performance, especially in any kind of race, such as a 100 meter sprint or in a 50 meter sprint for swimming. Uh, but, it lose, but it uses a lot of energy and therefore causes uh, fatigue quite quickly. Speed in specific areas can also be uh, very useful for performance, such as fast feet in football can help the athlete to deceive their opponent or to take the ball off them. Uh, speed is tested using uh, normally sprint tests, such as the 20 meter sprint. Now move to power. Power is defined as an amount of work done in a particular time and maximal power is directly affected by maximal strength. Uh, it is essentially strength at speed. Uh, power is the key to good acceleration and so is required in many sports for good performance. Uh, power uses large amounts of energy and so is not efficient for extended durations but is efficient if the sport is time dependent such as in a race. Uh, power can be tested by doing things like a standing long jump or a seated, uh, a seated throw. Reaction time is the speed at which an athlete responds to an external stimulus. Uh, this helps performance in races or when an athlete needs to respond to their opponent's movements quickly. Uh, reaction time does not really relate to movement efficiency very much at all. Uh, and to test it, you might do something like the uh, ruler drop test, which I'm sure you might be familiar with. Balance is the, the athlete's ability to stay in control of their body's position. Now this can be static balance when the athlete is not moving, or it can be dynamic balance when the athlete is moving. Balance is required to both cause movement and prevent it. Thus, it is vital for movement efficiency. Uh, balance helps with the biomechanics of movement. And the way that you test uh, for balance is to do something like a stalk test for static, or, uh, for static balance, or you might do a t-test for the dynamic balance. Now the reason I went through all those out of order slightly is because they all come together when it comes to agility. Agility is a combination of speed, power, balance and reaction time. Uh, it is a rapid whole body movement with change of velocity or direction in response to a stimulus. Now some textbooks you'll find are actually missing that last bit of response to a stimulus, uh, but the technical definition includes that response to a stimulus. In sport, uh, the stimulus is normally an opponent or an object that is moving uh, and the athlete has to respond to that. Uh, so it might be that a defender comes up and they need to step sideways or they might need to shield a ball or something like that. Uh, agility contributes to movement efficiency because the ability to change direction at speed and not fall over uh, helps to conserve energy and improve performance. Uh, it is hard to test because you need an unknown stimulus. If the athlete knows what's going to happen, then that's not an actual agility test. Uh, often it uses video analysis and so it's very difficult to do. Next is coordination. Coordination is the body's ability to perform smooth and efficient movements. Uh, good coordination requires the athlete to combine multiple movements into a single movement that is fluid and achieves the intended goal. So it is not just hand-eye or hand-foot coordination. We're talking about a whole body movement uh, type thing. Uh, you can have fine coordination, so that's when you're looking at things like snooker or darts where you have small uh, muscle groups moving very um, small movements. Uh, or there can be gross uh, coordination when we're talking about running or jumping where you have large muscle groups working to produce this movement. Coordination is very connected to movement efficiency. Uh, some people will say it's actually pretty much the same thing. Uh, but the better coordinated person is, the better their movement efficiency will be due to their better biomechanics. Okay, uh, an example of a way to test coordination would be ball toss. Uh, that would test for hand-eye coordination. A whole body coordination is much harder um, because you need to focus on the fluency and the fluidity of the movement, uh, the whole smoothness or whether it's jerky. Uh, the more jerky, the less coordinated the person is. Matapos nating malaman yung mga information regarding health-related components and skills-related components of physical fitness, meron tayong questions dito. Under what's more? So, ito ay sasagutan nyo lang 
Write only the letter on your answer sheets. So, to accomplish the physical fitness test, meron tayong form dito. At meron din tayong guide. Merong day 1, day 2, and day 3. Kung saan ay ito lang ang gagawin nyo for a specific day. So, dito sa ating what I have learned, ay meron lamang tayong mga statements dito. At ang magiging answers nyo lang ay true or false. What I can do. So, meron tayong dalawang instruction dito. Una ay for online learners. At yung pangalawa ay for non-online learners. For online learners, meron tayong link na ibibigay sa description para sa ating personal fitness plan. For non-online learners, meron lamang kayong sasagot ang 15 item quiz. So ayan, I hope natulungan ko kayo sa pagsagot ninyo sa inyong mga module. Magkita-kita tayo ulit sa susunod. Thanks for watching!